hunt a long way from home, my friend. Shawnee's call no white man friend. Well, you did it at council three months ago. You stood with us at council when we refused to allow the white man's company to build his road through our land. It was agreed that it would go to the north, beyond our hunting ground. Well, I still stand with you on that. Then you have lost influence amongst your people. The road is built to the land that was forbidden. And now they plan a fort. A fort? I hadn't heard about that. That is why we come for you. So you can see with your own eyes how they died. And to tell our men we did no more than defend our rights and honor. If this road were closed, would the Shawnees still make war? Who is there to close it? Well, it might be me, but I'd need some time. My brother and I have waited long already. Our people have waited long. Hold off a few days longer. Give me a chance. We have trusted you in our council. I will believe that you did not know of these things. If it will keep peace amongst our people, I will wait for your return. How many miles stay, Mr. Cassidy? Thirty, give or take a fraction. Oh, that's traveling. That's the best since we left Salem. Back to camp by noon tomorrow, right on schedule. <laughs> that's what a road's for, speed. Well, you sure laid her out for it. Straight as a gun barrel the whole way. Naturally. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Even learn to me some of your surveyor talk. Phelps. I think so. Sure 
Shawnee. Young one, too. They have to take it hard. How could I know? Couldn't I reckon not in the dark? You better keep your mouth shut as far as the rest of the crew's concerned. Wouldn't want them getting a case of Indian jitters when everything's going so well. be the same ones that came back yonder. Mm. They can't be far ahead. That suits me. We catch up with those wheels, and I'm in for a ride. A ride? Uh, don't look at me. With those legs of yours, you only have to take half as many steps as anybody else. Come to think of it, he does have us at a disadvantage. <laughs> the same thing to you that it does to me? It's a warning, isn't it? Well, it's not like Red Hand to go back on his word. He said he'd give us time. Unless he had good reason. Well, in that case, we could be in for an awful lot of trouble. like the three of us was about enough. Well, who sent you in? The Shawnee. So they attacked you, too. I was hoping to avoid a showdown, but uh, it was bound to happen, I suppose. Uh, the only thing now is to teach them a sharp enough lesson to take the fight out of them, which we could have done right here with your help, but you, uh, you overdid your bluff and chased them off. That's just what we wanted to do. I don't understand. Well, Mr. Cassidy, if you or any of your men had so much as barked the hide of one Shawnee, we'd all be done for. Red Hand sent me here, and that was his message. Mr. Cassidy!
Boone, take a look at this. What's your friend Red Hand got to say about that? Somebody ought to take that air out of him. You got any whiskey? Not here. There's some at camp, along with other medical supplies. How far is that? A mile, maybe a little longer. Take it easy, son. Hand me that blanket. Mr. Cassidy. Did you see a lance stuck in the road back a ways? I did. Do you know what it meant? If I didn't then, I do now, and the sooner we get back to camp, the better off we'll all be. All right, lead out. Thinking if we set out to stop an Indian war, we're off to a mighty poor start. Phelps in the survey tent and see that he's comfortable. Heat up some water, get my medical kit. I'll be in to take care of him. Phelps. A couple of you men get up there and give me a hand. I'm not as obstinate as you think I am, Bone. Merely practical, Mike. I do have a responsibility to my employers. Surely you don't uh, actually expect me to abandon all this? It's not what I expect, it's what's right. This is Shawnee territory, and you're here without their permission. You were at that council meeting? You know we made an agreement with the Shawnees before we cut one stick of timber. I know you made an agreement to bend your road 10 or 15 miles to the north so you wouldn't cut across their hunting grounds. That was a technicality. It turned out to be impractical. I contracted to complete this road before winter set in. I mean to satisfy my contract. The only way I can do it is to go straight through. The point I'm trying to make is that the Shawnee didn't want the road in the first place. But they gave a little. And now you've gone and broken the agreement. I understand their attitude completely. Might even sympathize with them, in fact, if they weren't Indian and the worst ones of the lot besides. What have you got against Indians? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Except that they make this country too dangerous for... General settlement, and settlement is my business. Rum? We're much alike, you know, you and I. With the same job to do. I like to think we go about it a bit differently. Frontiersmen, they call us. We're more than that. We're the builders. If we're hard men in our way, it's because we have the hard things to do. In the end, the way we think and feel don't count. Only how well we prepared the way for those who follow. 
Or how much money your company will make from the lands they've stolen from the Shawnee. They'll lose it someday anyhow, you know that. Does it matter how? It does to them. I've told you I sympathize with the Shawnee. But we're not here as illegally as you seem to think. The sympathies of the Continental Congress happen to be with us. I find that hard to believe. Why, they're practical men, too. They seem to feel this road we've built will be a very useful military highway in case there's trouble with the British. To say nothing of the fort we promised to build. If there's fighting here, it won't be with the British. And you won't build your fort. Red Hand will see to that. If you will take my advice, you'll pack up and get out if it's not too late already. That almost sounds like an order. Take it any way you like. You sound like you're siding with the Shawnee. In this case, I am. I refuse to be intimidated, Mr. Bone. Mr. Cassidy, I'm trying to save your life and the lives of everybody in your company. Don't you feel any responsibility for those men? Are you finished? Not quite. I want to know why the Shawnee attacked you today. Do the Shawnees ever need a reason when the odds are in their favor? That doesn't answer my question. I've had enough of your insolence, Mr. Bone. Good day. I don't mean to interrupt, but that wagon ride didn't do Phelps any good. I'll take care of him. I'm sorry you had to make such a long trip for nothing. Draw on us for any supplies you need. Daniel, it didn't seem to be in use, and all the tents are occupied. Yeah, we'll have to get something better than this for stopping arrows. Mm. He wouldn't listen? No. Nope. If we knew what was behind that fight this afternoon, we'd know what to expect. When we asked about, none of the men seemed to know. I think I'll do a little backtracking, see what I can find out. Save me some supper. Got a funny feeling I wish I was somewhere else right now. sending out a search party. I went all the way back where they camped last night. There was some kind of ruckus there. There was blood on the ground. And I reckon it's not safe to start back in the morning. Not if Red Hand has turned his warriors loose. We're not going to be any safer staying here. It's about the size of them. Cassidy here? Over there. He's worth one more try. Keep it hot for me. Oh, it's you, Boone. 
Told you you're out scouting. Did you find anything? I found some blood where you picketed the horses. Bear frightened them last night. I shot it in the dark. Didn't know I hit it. It's the first bear I ever heard of that wore moccasins. You calling me a liar? Not until I find out more than I know now. Look, Mr. Boone, I didn't ask you and your friends here. You're free to leave any time you wish. I wish I could take you up on that. But this goes beyond me and my friends. Red Hand made that clear enough. I guess we could use three more guns in case the Shawnees attacking for us. Well, they'll attack. You can depend on that. The sooner the better, then! Our contract is to clear this land. If it means clearing out the Indians, I'll do that, too. Have you ever had a finished fight with a Shawnee? Or any other tribe of Indians, for that matter? This isn't our first settlement contract. And I've killed my share of Indians. Well, in that case, Mr. Cassidy, if I were you, I'd get some sentries out. And I'd get those logs yonder piled in some sort of breastwork. Or you're not going to get a chance to kill very many more. I thought Cassidy was going to take care of that. He said he wouldn't take a chance. But I'd have to wait till he got me to a doctor. You said back yonder that this air ought to be cut out. It should have been cut out some time back. Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. But I can't guarantee you'll live. You've carried around too long already. There's a chance. There's got to be a chance. But it's worth a try. Get as much of this rum down as you can. Missing. Get out the sentries, double them up, and change them every hour from now on. Brown and Harper, the rest of you fall too. We may be headed for trouble, and we better be prepared. You get those wagons into that gap there. Snake some logs in to close up the others. All right, move. Daniel made his point. He usually does. Give him some time. Looks like I may be able to sleep tonight after all. Don't overdo it. You may have to wake up in a hurry. Cassidy to have someone stay with you. Mr. Boone, wait a minute. There's something you ought to know. you doing in that tent with Phelps? I took that arrow out. What'd you want him to do, Cassidy? Lie there and die so he couldn't tell me about that Shawnee boy you shot? So? So what do you intend to do about it? I don't know yet. You've already made a liar out of me. I promised Red Hand there'd be no bloodshed. 
It was an unfortunate accident. That's what Phelps said. I hope I can make Red Hand believe that. You mean to talk to him? If I can. You see, I made him another promise, too. I told him I'd close this road. That's one I aim to keep. Over my dead body. That may be, too. Bone. A short time ago, I said you were free to leave. I'm afraid now I'll have to change my mind. Sawyer? Yes, sir? If Boone and his friends try to leave this camp, shoot them. I have reason to believe they're in league against us with the Indians. To avoid trouble, take their guns. Allow me to congratulate you on your diplomatic finesse. Before, we were in trouble with the Shawnee. Now every man in this camp has orders to shoot us if we try to leave. And we don't have nothing to shoot back with. Well, I wish I could convince him that the Shawnee mean business. Somehow, I've got to get out of here and tell Red Hand that boy that was shot was killed by accident. That'll be quite an accomplishment. You know, Jericho, I think you need a bath. Now, hold on a minute. I just swum a river yesterday. While we're on the subject, I think you need one, too. I take that as a personal affront. I swam the same river that Jericho swum. Only yesterday. Well, unless you boys are awful thirsty, I'd start figuring out another way of Empty in those water barrels. I just left Phelps. He slept well and his fever's down. No doubt you saved his life. Well, he may not thank me if the Shawnee take us over. Well, you think they're out there? They're out there. The sentries reported nothing unusual all night. <laughs> I've never seen a quieter morning. Just listen. Cherokee have been fighting the Shawnee on and off for a long time. Mr. Sawyer, they have a saying. When the birds stop talking, the woods are full of feathers, red feathers. Well, whether we like it or not, we're going to have to go and find out. Glad to know you've changed your attitude, Boone. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. Carry the fight to them. That's the only way they'll understand. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. All I meant was that we're out of water. Somebody will suffer for this. All of us will if we don't get those water barrels filled up. Quite a risk, considering you say the woods are full of Shawnees. That's right. Since you know Red Hand so well and your friend's an Indian, I suppose you too are going for the water. Can you think of anybody else that'd have a better chance of getting through? It won't work, Boone. You're not leaving this camp. My men are loyal to me. I'll find someone to go. 
even when they find out why Phelps took that error. Maybe I ought to talk with your boys. Well? You and your Cherokee go for the, for the water. I know, of course, that you'll talk to Red Hand. If I can get close enough to him without getting killed. Now, why can't I go along? Because Cassidy's a fool. You just make sure nobody leaves this camp. If he tries to lead a party out here, we'll all get killed. Sign five of my best marksmen go along with you. We're going out after water, not Indians. I don't want any man to leave this camp. I open her up. this camp, day's wage for a day's work. Now, we may not have to fight in spite of what Boone says, but if we do, I want the best out of you. You give it to me and I promise you a bonus for every Indian you kill. Same little bunch that jumped us yesterday. There's a ravine beyond them a ways. If we could crowd them into it, but we might have them. Look, Mr. Boone said to stay no matter what, and not to shoot any Indians. Boone's not in command here, and I don't happen to agree with his tactics. I say let's attack. Sawyer, you take over here. I need five volunteers to go with me. Get this out of the way. Daniel said to stay here. Don't you get hard nosed with me, boy. You're a fool, Cassidy. Just like Daniel said. Well, boy, if that's the way you feel, I think I'll just take you along with me. To let you see how wrong you are. I turn around and march. All right, close the entrance. Hold it. Man, you hold your fire till I tell you. Now, let's go.
Let them box now. Start counting your bonuses. from the camp. That don't sound like it's coming from the water hole. Then it's got to be them with Mr. Cassidy. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Wait. Somebody's got to hold the camp. That was Mr. Boone's orders in the first place. Get yourself another rifle. The rest of you get back to the barricades. Give them some cover as they come in. Said he couldn't wait. What is he trying to prove? He tried to prove that Indians won't stand and fight. But he's not the first, and he probably won't be. Daniel. Jericho and Cassidy. Get that water back to camp, man. Go and don't let another man outside that barricade. Daniel, you'll never make it. Well, if it was just Cassidy, I'd be tempted to let Red Hand have him. You know what they'll do to Jericho. Give me an hour, then use your own judgment. should send a rescue party out? Cassidy did that. Now look where we are.
lives of your friends. Tell Red Hand this. That the young boy who died was shot by accident. I gave Red Hand my word that the road will be closed, and it is closed. There's been enough killing. This land belongs to the Shawnee. Red Hand himself, if we kill him, our troubles would be over. If we kill him, we'll kill our last chance of getting out of here alive. What do you mean by that? That road out there in this camp are what the Shawnees really hate, what they're fighting, not us. There's a good gamble Red Hand wants peace as much as we do. What are you proposing, Daniel? I propose that we burn this camp and walk out of here unarmed. You're mad. Those Shawnees are waiting for us. Well, now, that's the gamble I mentioned. Jericho, get some men and put this gear in a pile. I'm responsible for this property. I won't have it destroyed. I've had enough of your interference! Jericho, do what I told you. into. But whatever happens, don't break ranks. Keep your eyes straight ahead and your mouths shut. You really think this is going to work? You better hope it does. Now lay those guns down. You heard me. Get rid of them. And Jericho, when we move out, touch off the gunpowder. Let's go.
we're leaving you here. I reckon there's no real way I can thank you and your friends. Well, don't even try. Mr. Casty may have called this road a highway, but I'll never be so glad to get off anything in my life. <laughs> For one thing, you're headed in the right direction. Civilization's going to look real great. That letter I gave you to the Continental Congress, show that to your company, and I don't think you'll have any trouble with your back pay or the materials you had to leave behind. Any of you fellows get tired of working for a living, we're going to clear a lot of land at Boonesboro. <laughs> Good hunting, Boone. Thank you, Mr. Boone. Goodbye, Mr. Boone. Bye. You know, it's a pretty fair road they built at that. Cassidy was right about one thing. There'll be settlers up there one day when somebody makes the right agreement with a Shawnee. And this old road will see a lot of traveling. Say. Do you fellas smell chitlins frying? From 20 miles away? That close? What are we waiting for? Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he. Yeah. Hey.